Hey, I'm Andrew Connell. What you're about to watch is the overview lesson to one of the chapters in my MS600 exam prep guide course. This course is available for purchase on my site, voitanos.io. I'll include a link to it in the description below the video. This overview video, which is the first lesson of the chapter that you selected, gives you an idea of what the chapter is going to cover. You can learn more by checking out the description below the video about this chapter. If you've got any questions about the chapter or the course, just drop a comment below the video and I'll be sure to get back to you. So with that, let me get out of the way. Enjoy the overview lesson from this chapter. Hello and welcome back. In this chapter, I'm going to focus on the workload called Extend and Customize SharePoint. And while SharePoint is a huge topic, thankfully the MS600 exam primarily focuses just on the SharePoint framework, which is the recommended way to customize and extend SharePoint. Now, Microsoft SharePoint is a customizable platform that developers can extend with custom components. And the SharePoint framework is the recommended development model to extend the modern SharePoint experience. This workload accounts for 15 to 20% of the questions in the question pool that could show up when you take the exam. In the first iteration of the MS600 exam, SharePoint had a much stronger focus than it does today. It originally was responsible for 20 to 25% of the questions on the exam, but in the November 2020 refresh of the exam, Microsoft realigned the weighting to put more emphasis on Microsoft Teams than on SharePoint. Hence the reduction of SharePoint question pool down to about 15 to 20%. Now that you know what SharePoint is and how much of this exam the uh, questions are going to account for devoted to SharePoint, let's look at the depth of knowledge that you're going to need to have in these various areas. Recall Bloom's taxonomy from the overview chapter in the course? Let's use that again to provide some context around what you need to know because it helps to understand how deep you need to know something before you embark studying for that topic. This helps you grasp the level of questions that you'll see on the exam. Now, when you look at the skills checklist that Microsoft provides for the MS600 exam, you'll notice most of the skills include the following words, describe, identify, create, and implement. These phrases fall across the entire spectrum of the taxonomy. And that means for SharePoint, we're going to focus on the entire pyramid of the taxonomy, all the way from the lower order thinking skills like remember and understand, all the way up to the higher order thinking skills like evaluate and create. Now let's take a minute to explore what lessons you're gonna find in this chapter so that you know what to expect as you proceed through this SharePoint chapter. In this first lesson on the overview, you've learned what Extend the SharePoint uh, workload is all about. And on the next slide, I'm gonna wrap up this lesson with some additional learning resources so be sure that you check the notes under the lesson video uh, for a collection of all the external references that I use throughout this chapter. The SharePoint workload is quite large and so many products at Microsoft not only come from the SharePoint but also integrate with it. And it has a long history of various ways to extend this product. It also has uh, the added complication that SharePoint roots come from an on-premise installable product well, the focus today is the cloud service, SharePoint Online. So in addition to all of that, we're also on the fourth customization extensibility model for SharePoint. Sounds like a lot, yeah? yeah, it is. But just like the other chapters, you don't need to know everything about this topic in order to pass the exam. So in the next lesson, I'm gonna call out specific things that you need to focus on as well as things you can ignore as they aren't relevant to the exam. Then we'll begin with a look at uh, an overview of what the SharePoint framework is. The SharePoint framework is commonly referred to as SPFX. So that's how you're probably gonna hear me refer to it most of the time throughout this, this chapter. This lesson is gonna look at some of the more global things that you need to be familiar with when it comes to SPFX. And this includes the, the tools that developers are gonna use and also cover, cover elements of SPFX that are not specific to particular types of components or topics that warrant their own discussion or lesson, like deployment or working with additional APIs. In the next lesson, I'll cover web parts and the basic um, building blocks for creating SPFX-based customizations. And we're also gonna look at how developers can add support for users either uh, to edit public properties on the web part using property panes 
and some alternative usage scenarios for web parts, such as implementing single page applications and tabs in custom Microsoft Teams apps. And then we're gonna look at the other popular type of component that you can build with SharePoint Framework, extensions. These are also referred to as UI extensions, and they enable developers to customize modern SharePoint pages and lists in one component. In this lesson, we'll look at the different types of extensions that you could be tested on in the uh, MS600 exam. Now, after covering the different components that you can create with SPFX, I'll then cover how to consume different types of APIs that are external to the SharePoint framework. And then finally, I'm gonna cover the aspects of packaging and deploying SPFX solutions into your production environments. Now, just like all the other chapters in this course, I'm keeping the depth of explanation to the level of what you need to know in order to pass the exam. I'm not trying to go too deep with my explanations because this is an exam prep course. It's not intended to teach you everything about these different topics, but there are plenty of resources that are available to you that you can leverage if you aren't familiar with a topic. So if I cover something in the course that you may think, I got it, I'm comfortable with my knowledge on this topic, then you're probably good. But if you think to yourself, mm, I don't think I get it, or if you weren't familiar with a process or a particular API that I cover, then you should go read the official documentation or study one of the multiple resources that I'm referencing throughout the course to make sure that you are adequately familiar with the topic prior to taking the exam. Now I'll reference specific resources throughout the course, but like I said before, be sure to check the notes for this lesson under the video below for a collection of all the external references that I use throughout this chapter. But on this slide, I want to quickly run through the Microsoft learning resources that I'm providing and explain what's in each one of these. The first group of links is around Microsoft Learning. They have learning paths and modules, and a learning path is just a collection of a bunch of modules that have been strung together. The learning path for SharePoint is called Extend Microsoft SharePoint Associate, and it contains the modules used for self-paced study to study for the exam. We then have five modules that cover various topics that I'll reference throughout this chapter and all contain hands-on labs if you wanna practice some of the topics you need to be familiar with prior to taking the exam. Now these modules are as follows. Getting started with the SharePoint framework, developing web parts of the SharePoint framework, enable SharePoint framework web, property, uh, web part configuration with property panes, work with the SharePoint content using the SharePoint framework, extending the SharePoint framework user interface with SPFX extensions, leverage Microsoft Graph and third-party APIs, deploy SharePoint framework components to production and build Teams customizations using the SharePoint framework. And you'll notice a lot more modules in this learning path than others that I've referenced in other chapters throughout the course. And that's because the SharePoint modules were originally written prior to the MS600 exam and the Microsoft Learning Content site. So all the modules that support the content covered in the MS600 exam, but they're just broken down into much smaller topics. For example, there are two modules on dealing with web parts, one on web parts and one with web part properties. But in this chapter, I'm, I'm covering both of those as a single topic in a lesson rather than breaking it up. SharePoint also contains a ton of documentation as well on their site. And I'll reference a bunch of individual links in the lesson notes, but you can always start at their docs homepage. And again, found in the notes that accompany this lesson under the video. Okay, before we start looking at specific topics that you're gonna to be tested on, let's take a step back and let's look at what you need to know and equally as important what you don't need to know in this uh, when you go to take the exam. So let's start with what you really need to know. Now, I know you've heard me say this in every chapter, SharePoint's huge, but seriously, don't worry too much about it in this chapter. Thankfully, you don't need to know everything about extending and customizing SharePoint, because when we were developing the certification, we decided to focus on a few different aspects of SharePoint. First, SharePoint is both an, an on-premise installable server product, as well as a hosted cloud service. But remember, this certification is just for Microsoft 365, which is a hosted platform. So while there may be on-premises components or options with MS365 services, the focus on the certification is the cloud service. So therefore, the certification only focuses on SharePoint Online, not the installable on-premises version of SharePoint. And that includes SharePoint 2013, SharePoint Server 2016, and SharePoint Server 
2019. As I've, and also as I've previously mentioned, SharePoint has a long history of iterating on different development models and extensibility models, from full trust solutions to partially trusted solutions known as sandbox solutions to the add-in model. <laughs> SharePoint developers have been through quite a lot. The current development model promoted and supported by Microsoft is SharePoint Online, and it's called the SharePoint Framework. This model, specifically the SharePoint Framework, is the only one that the MS600 exam is gonna focus on. So I'm gonna go into detail on the depth of knowledge that you should have around SPFX within the lessons throughout this chapter, specifically how well you need to know these different APIs. So let's switch gears. Instead of talking about what you need to know, let's talk about what you can ignore in your preparation for the exam. I think I've already covered this enough, but just to be clear, if it's not SPFX and it's a way to customize SharePoint, you don't need to know it for the exam. This means that you can ignore everything about fully trusted solutions or partially trusted solutions and even add-ins. You don't need to concern yourself with anything other than SPFX for customizing SharePoint when it comes to the MS600. Now, unlike early versions of the MS600 exam, you're not gonna be tested on the theming or the branding options that are available in SharePoint. Early on, there weren't many questions in this area. And in that big August, 2022 update of the exam, they fully removed this section from the exam. And in recent years, Microsoft has invested quite a bit in the declarative customization options for SharePoint. You've got things like list formatting, row formatting, column formatting, as well as using things like site designs and site scripts for provisioning assets. These are all capabilities that are supported by SharePoint Online, but none of these technologies are on the MS600 exam. None of them are listed within the skills assessment worksheets. So these are things you do not need to concern yourself with. Another area that Microsoft has invested a lot in with respect to SharePoint is in something called the Power Platform. Two particular aspects of this are Power Apps and Power Automate. We used to call that Flow. Power Apps are touted as the way to customize SharePoint forms, and Power Automate is positioned as the workflow solution for SharePoint Online. But neither of these are gonna be covered on the MS600 exam. In fact, there is nothing related to the Power Platform that you'll be tested on with the MS600 exam. There are other exams for that actually. Now the SharePoint framework is a client-side framework that runs in the browser. And this means it's rooted in JavaScript, but developers use TypeScript to write SharePoint framework components. Microsoft offers lots of different APIs and SDKs to connect to SharePoint APIs, including the client object model, also known as the CSOM, and plenty of community projects from the Microsoft 365 Patterns and Practices group. But none of these will be covered on the exam. Also, just like the other workloads I've covered, only the official APIs provided and supported by Microsoft are covered on the MS600 exam, and those are limited to just SPFX. Furthermore, you don't need to pay any attention to any of the PowerShell commandlets or community-related projects related to SharePoint. This includes PowerShell commandlets from Microsoft proper or from the Mac Microsoft 365 PMP group. Okay. That wraps up the overview lesson. And the next lesson, we're gonna cover uh, an overview of SPFX and what things you need to pay attention to. So I will see you in the next lesson.